Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. You know, TEDx is one of those places I really want to be part of, and this is a privilege to be here. My topic is the power of technology governance. Now, if you look at these two worlds that we're looking at, we're looking at on the right side, like a perfect environment, right? And on the left side, it's actually quite dark. Imagine standing at a crossroads. On one side, a world where technology leads us to new heights, a utopia where innovation solves real problems and humanity thrives in harmony. Picture green skyscrapers, clean energy, smart systems making life better. On the other side, a dystopia where greed drives destruction, inequality grows, and freedoms fade under constant watch. Polluted skies, widening digital divide. Either of these could be our future. These futures could not be more different. The choice is ours. What we do today will affect our future. Governance and leadership, they are the key. With fairness, responsibility, and collaboration, we can shape the world. A world where technology empowers everyone. Not technology damaging our lives. Let me explain. When we are looking at, um, you know, for any businesses that would want to thrive, you will normally plan from where you're at and your vision. And you would normally have that portion, the gap where you want to make changes. But what if indeed you can have a good return on investment, return on equity, but it will make you sacrifice this tree. Will you cut the tree for you to be able to grow and thrive your business? It's a little bit unfortunate that without human factor at this point, because there is machine learning and, and eventually um, artificial intelligence and machine learning will pick this up. Unfortunately, at this point, this will become collateral damage. What does that mean? Which means that people will, um, using the aid of AI, and if you ask um, what's the most profitable way to um, deal with your business, it's really cutting that tree. But that tree is a thousand year old. Now you're going to say, well, you know, but AI can pick that up. AI can eventually pick it up. But in the meantime, there's collateral damage and that's that tree. The role of uh, technology in communications that can increase your sales, improve your business, it, it does enhance communication, data-driven decision-making, it helps aid faster document management, meeting management, cybersecurity and data protection, and all of this technology, fantastic technology, is advantageous to any businesses, not just businesses, but eventually to all consumers like us. It's technology is fun. Technology is amazing. But unfortunately, there are things that while well, technology allows us to do it, just because you can do it, it doesn't mean that you should do it. Cutting off the thousand year old tree. Are we to accept the collateral damage? Collateral damage could mean in the case of Tesla hitting a um, a person and in, in a legal case, um, you know, putting someone in jail that's innocent. Those are collateral damage and eventually that will be picked up and eventually that will be perfected. But for now, do we accept collateral damages? I, I won't uh, dwell much into what I just said because I personally don't understand what I said. So these days, it's actually easy to take a video of someone of me here 
and change exactly what I'm saying and do it in a different language. You guys can do it. I can do it. I can make anyone speak whatever language as long as they're on video. And, um, but is that right? Yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, I, I, I did this in, a, in about 15 different languages. And, and for this particular case, I was going to show five different languages. But the point is, it's fun. It's fantastic technology. Who would need a Miss Universe interpreter when you can already interpret on the spot? But the danger, the deep fake danger is already out there. In fact, in June uh, 2024, during the Turing test, you can no longer tell if it's real or it's fake. And that's problematic. And according to the World Economic Forum, Global Risk Report 2024 has issued a stark warning. Misinformation and disinformation, primarily driven by deep fakes, rank now the most severe global short-term risk. Can you just imagine all the frauds? In, in fact, in, in a bank in Hong Kong, the CEO called up and did a video call and says, release so-and-so amount into a, a this account, and it was done. And that's actually the fake for you. We are just touching on the, the tip of the iceberg on, on what this problem can do. Again, just because you can do it, should you do it? Should we put a stop to this? Should we put something that could hinder this? When it comes to fraud, and basically deep fakes or fraud. All businesses will be affected from services to finance. Finance is, is around about 50% at services, 19 or 20%. Practically all businesses will be affected. In fact, in the latest study of, of fraud tree that's sprouting and in the future there would be more. According to McKenzie, 6 trillion is already being lost to cybersecurity tax and, and deep fakes and, and fraud. And that's rapidly increasing. It's now the third largest economy. So what does this picture got to do with all this technology covering us? What's got to do with, with fraud? I super love this picture. It's a picture, by the way, it's a replica picture of 30 grade one students in Japan where the teacher at around about 11.30 left a luscious strawberry shortcake. And the teacher basically said, don't touch the cake. I'll be back later. And that's it. Teacher left. Come 1.30. What's that? A couple of hours. Do you think anyone touched the cake? And I'm referring to Japan here. Absolutely none. You see, in Japan, they spent the first nine years embedding good values, discipline, doing the right thing. And this is where I would want to line up the importance of this particular slide. And this is really embedding good values in our society. Um, according to the World Bank IFC, um, fraud only happens when three factors are in. It's called ROB, rationalization, opportunity, and pressure. Pressure, my mom is sick, um, you know, my sister is in hospital, oh, I need to make that sales, or whatever pressure it is. If there's an opportunity and you think that everyone's doing it and it's okay, I'm going to return the money, that's rationalization, that fraud will happen. Again, according to um, World Bank statistics, 67% of the fraud happens to be either done by an employee or with the employee. So how do we put a stop if we can? And according to the study, is the best way to handle fraud. It's not necessarily technology. Technology helps a lot. But the best way is to embed good values, which is to take out that rationalization, therefore not completing the triangle of fraud. I want to finish my talk here by just um, mentioning this. The difference between the outcome often hinges on how we govern technology. Without governance, unchecked technological progress can spiral into dystopia. 
with thoughtful policies and frameworks, technology can lead us towards a thriving utopia. The decision is ours, and it's today. Thank you.